This tape is a little different from the others in the Right Way training series. This is not about installing fiberglass insulation, it's about how safe it is to work with fiberglass. Since you work around it all the time, here's a program to give you all the facts. Fiberglass insulation has been used for years to help keep our homes, factories, and offices cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. And in today's world, with renewed emphasis on conserving precious resources, fiberglass insulation is an environmentally sound investment for all of us. It helps conserve fossil fuels and can result in significant energy savings. The fiberglass industry is a strong contributor to our nation's economy. It's a $4 billion a year business that provides jobs for thousands of workers, both in manufacturing and installation. Fiberglass is one of the most thoroughly researched products in use today. As a responsible corporate citizen, CertainTeed is constantly working to ensure the health and safety of its employees and customers. This is the headquarters of CertainTeed Corporation, one of the leading manufacturers of fiberglass insulation. Health and safety research is an important priority at CertainTeed. Dr. Lawrence Mellon, CertainTeed's corporate medical director. At CertainTeed, we're dedicated to protecting the health and safety of our employees and customers. That's why we joined with other fiberglass insulation manufacturers to fund medical scientific research at leading universities and independent laboratories. More than 600 reports and studies have evaluated the health aspects of fiberglass making it one of the most studied products in use today. These reports show that fiberglass is safe to work with and to use. This research includes laboratory studies of humans and animals on topics such as biosolubility and air quality at manufacturing plants and installation sites. Let's look at the human studies first. There are two types. One evaluates the health of living workers the other looks at the causes of death among former workers. To date, studies of current or deceased workers have not proven a relationship between working with fiberglass insulation and the development of respiratory disease. One study of current workers was conducted at Tulane Medical Center. Chest x-rays of more than 1,000 plant workers were examined. The results showed the workers to be generally healthy without any detectable evidence of respiratory problems brought on by the job. There are two major studies that involve workers who are now deceased. One was conducted in Europe under the auspices of the International Agency for Research on Cancer, called IARC for short. This study showed that lung cancer death rates among fiberglass workers did not differ significantly from other people living in the same area. The second and more comprehensive study is being conducted at the University of Pittsburgh. This study began more than 20 years ago and is examining the causes of death of more than 30,000 former fiberglass plant workers in 17 plants in the United States. The purpose of this study is to find out if fiberglass workers have a greater risk of developing respiratory cancer. This study has not shown a link between fiberglass exposure and cancer. The University of Pittsburgh study continues today under the direction of Dr. Gary Marsh. To date, it appears that the risk, if any, of respiratory cancer among the manufacturing workers is very small. Uh, and these are workers who are exposed to much higher levels of fiberglass than persons would be exposed to in the general population. So if we translate the risk that we're seeing to the workers, to the general population, that risk, if, if there's any risk at all, would be even smaller. Dr. Marsh has stated, quote, Our study provides no evidence to date that respiratory cancer mortality is related to fibrous glass exposure, end quote. In other words, no direct link between fiberglass and cancer. Animal studies have also supported the conclusion that fiberglass is safe. In inhalation studies, laboratory animals breathe in large quantities of glass fibers. The health of the animals is carefully monitored and tabulated. Researchers can then use their findings to help predict how humans might be affected. Dr. Lawrence Mellon. 
In test situations, laboratory animals inhale up to 10,000 times more glass fibers than workers would ever be exposed to. Yet no animal inhalation study has shown a link between inhaling glass fibers and the development of lung cancer. The results of one of the most extensive animal inhalation studies ever conducted were released in 1998. This $10 million study, conducted by scientists at the research and consulting company in Geneva, Switzerland, evaluated the results of fiberglass exposure in laboratory animals throughout their natural two-year lifespan. When their lungs were compared to those of animals exposed to plain, filtered air, scientists found no statistically significant difference. And in fact, results show that in the lungs, the effects of the kind of glass fibers used in insulation were similar to those caused by inhaling ordinary dust. Animals exposed to the kind of insulation fibers to which workers are exposed did not suffer any adverse effects. Other studies have been performed on laboratory animals in which controversial methodologies were used. In these cases, large quantities of glass fibers have been injected in or surgically implanted into the bodies of the animals. Although these studies have been known to produce tumors, many scientists question the validity of animal implantation studies. Dr. Mellon explains. You see, the problem with implanting fiberglass or any other material into animal bodies is that this simply is not the way humans come in contact with fiberglass. Just how relevant animal implantation studies are became a critical issue during a review of fiberglass research by IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer. In 1987, an IARC panel reviewed the results of both human and animal studies. The implantation study results, controversial as they may be, required IARC under its very strict rules to classify fiberglass wool as possibly carcinogenic to humans. However, it's important to point out that IARC itself noted that evidence from the human studies was inadequate to link fiberglass and cancer. Like many experts, Dr. Eugene McConnell, himself a member of the IARC panel and former director of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services National Toxicology Program, questions the significance of implantation experiments. He believes that animal inhalation studies are a much more accurate way to determine how glass fibers might affect humans. And, as we've said, inhalation studies have not linked fiberglass with cancer. If the question that one is trying to answer with an animal study is, what is the relative risk that a human would be under if he or she were exposed to a fiber, then clearly the implantation studies are not very good for that purpose. Uh, a better way would be to expose the animal like you and I would be exposed, that is, by inhalation. And in those studies, there have been several of them, uh, at least six good studies in rats and one good study in hamsters. And in all of those studies, all seven, there is absolutely no indication that these fibers can cause cancer in animals. So in terms of what you would believe, I think that most reasonable scientists would believe the inhalation studies over the implantation studies. We also examine the workplace itself by conducting industrial hygiene surveys. These include measuring the amount of fibers in the air at manufacturing and installation sites. These tests continue to show that the amount of glass fibers in the air at manufacturing facilities and installation sites is extremely low. In plants, fiberglass exposure levels are typically lower than the exposure limit recommended by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, commonly known as NIOSH. Glass fiber levels during installation are higher than plant levels, but in most cases are still below NIOSH's recommended exposure level. Unlike asbestos fibers, which remain in the lungs more or less permanently, glass fibers have been shown to disappear from the system over a short period of time. It simply makes good sense, though, when working around fiberglass that we take normal precautionary measures, just as when we work around paint or sawdust or many other common substances that may be inhaled or may cause temporary irritation. Certainty requires that disposable dust respirators be worn when working with fiberglass because it makes good sense to avoid inhaling any kind of dust. Wearing a disposable dust respirator is a precaution, an extra measure that we take to maximize our safety.
In this sense, wearing a dust mask is like wearing a seatbelt when driving or wearing rubber gloves when working with electricity. It gives us additional protection. Other recommended work practices are printed in our packages of fiberglass insulation. OSHA, the United States Occupational Safety and Health Administration, enforces a hazard communication standard. It requires all manufacturers to communicate all available health and safety information about potentially hazardous substances. But it's important to understand that the label on fiberglass insulation packaging is intended to inform of a possible risk of cancer and not a known hazard. In fact, OSHA does not consider fiberglass to be a cause of cancer. The facts are clear. Despite all the studies that have been conducted, no evidence has been found that directly connects fiberglass exposure to respiratory disease or cancer in humans. This conclusion has been recognized by many international and national organizations, such as the World Health Organization, the International Program on Chemical Safety, and the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. Certainty will continue to develop and market safe, effective, and innovative fiberglass products. In doing so, we'll continue to ensure that our products are safe to manufacture, safe to install, and safe to use, and that they are helping to make our world a better place in which to live. Certainty Corporation, through its association with the North American Insulation Manufacturers Association, NEMA, is participating in the Health and Safety Partnership Program, a voluntary cooperative partnership between NEMA, OSHA, the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and several contractor organizations. For information on this program, contact Certainty. Also, we have a number of pamphlets that offer you health and safety facts about working with fiberglass insulation. For more information, write to us at the address on the screen.